Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Indiana State Police Roadshow. I'm your host, Sergeant John Perrine, Public Information Officer for the Indiana State Police Indianapolis District. The Roadshow is brought to you by the Indiana State Police Alliance and Cops for Kids, a subsidiary of the State Police Alliance. For more information about them, visit www.indianasfinest.com. Thank you to the one and only Tom Trial for who sets up the cameras, the lights, all the work to get us on the YouTube channel each and every week. If you're watching us on YouTube, uh, check out all the other things on our channel. It's really, really cool. A lot of historical information there. If you know anybody thinking about being an Indiana State Trooper, a lot of uh, information about the hiring process, the recruiting process, what the academy looks like, all that's on our Indiana State Police website or on the YouTube channel. Thank you to uh, my good buddy, Eddie Garrison. Worked so hard to get us on the radio across the state of Indiana each and every week. We want to thank him, Network Indiana. Uh, certainly appreciate all their efforts. My guest today, really, really good good friends, good guys, people with a lot of knowledge, a lot of police experience. Uh, to my left is a 30-year ISP veteran, Sergeant Jeff Rader. Sergeant Rader, welcome. Thank you, uh, Sergeant Prine. I appreciate it. Welcome, and, uh, man. The first time on the show, and and you know when I was a very very young trooper, back in 2005, I transferred to the Pendleton District, and Sergeant Rader was my first supervisor for a long time. And, Been around a while, no. And here's know. here's a story that I'll tell on myself because I didn't know him very well at the time, and it was late, it was dark, and I came from an area where we didn't have grass medians. And I tried to turn around under Cynthia Road, and I got my car stuck in the mud. I mean, really, really stuck in the mud. So I thought, man, I don't really want anybody to know about this. So I, I called the post on the phone. They called a tow truck on the phone. Nobody knew I was there. Turned my lights off, acted like I was running radar. Then a Fisher's police officer shows up, and she gets on the radio and says, I'll be out with the trooper who's stuck in the mud at the 12-mile marker. Then Sergeant Raider shows up. And I'm sweating because I think I'm in trouble here. And he starts taking pictures, and I'm thinking, oh, boy, this is not, what did I do wrong? I, I tore up my car, whatever it is, and, and the whole time he's laughing. And I quickly realized we were going to be okay. You know, John, I found those pictures in my uh, garage here recently, and there's one, if you remember right, I've got you staged behind your car like you're pushing it. <laughs> so we did have a lot of fun that day, but that was, um, that was fun. it that happens was fun. to the best of us. Yeah, the other guest here is, is another guy with a lot of police experience. He comes to us uh, 15 years with ISP, but came to us from another agency uh, north of Chicago. Uh, that's First Sergeant Brent Gollinson. Brent, thanks for coming. Thank you. Nice to see you again, John. You know, one thing I wanted to pick your brains on today, because uh, we've been around this for a long time now, is that's winter driving. We're coming in the year where any day... The roads could be slick, we could see snow, we could see ice, and it just, it gets so repetitive. The things we say over and over again. But Sergeant Rader, what do you think about um, the advice? What, what do you tell folks if snow's coming? How do you prepare for that morning commute if, if the forecast is calling for snow? Well, the easiest thing to do is, is to um, leave early. Uh, so many people, uh, including myself sometimes, uh, we get so busy that we get behind in our schedules, and we try to make it up on the roadways. And that's really the worst place we could ever try to make up our time on. Um, the dangers out there with so much traffic and so many distractions now. I see uh, in my 30 years, the speeds are just astronomical to, compared to what they used to be on the roadways. But the main thing I really see, uh, John, is the following distances. And I don't think people even realize that they're normally about a car to two car lengths off of each other at interstate speeds, and that is so dangerous. Yeah, and, and following distance is is a problem. But then you add a little bit of precipitation, snow or ice on the roads, and talk about that. Like, how, how much distance should you be giving yourself? Absolutely. Well, as, as we all know, when the roads are slick, and, and sometimes it's – precipitation because it's winter time that it, you may not see it like black ice that term uh, you may not know that the, you're coming up on an icy bridge or lane of travel and you just need to be prepared for that given the temperatures and the fact that there might be precipitation be mindful there could be ice that you're not aware of there could be a, a slick spot of snow you're not aware of based on how the plows have, have taken care of things that day so you really need to increase your following distances there's no really hard and fast rule when it comes to the precipitation but think about this when you're on interstate speeds and you're traveling 50 miles an hour that's being generous and traffic comes to a sudden halt when the pavement's dry it obviously takes you longer to stop before striking the person in front of you so when you add rain or snow or ice you need to be mindful a slow down and b 
probably at least triple your following distance at that point. And, and you need to stay off your phone. We can't, yeah. you know, we can't be yeah. involved in distractions. That includes distractions within your own vehicle. Uh, kids that might be in the car you're dealing with, and we all have been there. So really focus on your driving, increase your following distance. More importantly, decrease your speed way down. Yeah, yeah. That the 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 foot power. I mean, just letting your foot off the gas a little bit is important. But when we talk about following distance, it, it also has a lot more to do than just stopping distance. Because if you increase your following distance, you're increasing your reaction time. You're increasing your visibility. You're, you're able to see things further ahead. And you may see a hazard in giving yourself more time to react to it. If you're right on somebody's bumper and they respond to a hazard at the last second, you're more than likely not going to have time to respond. You're going to hit it. You're going to crash. You're going to swerve whatever it may be. So increasing that following distance not only gives you more stopping time, but it gives you more reaction time and more visibility as well. One of the biggest misconceptions that I think we all see when there's snow on the road is is people rely on their car's technology to allow them to drive at their normal driving behavior. Just because you have all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive or front-wheel drive or you know anti-slip control or whatever it may be, you still have to slow down. Uh, talk about the what we see and, and the speeds on these snowy roads. Uh, well, <clears throat> I think we've all seen over our years of service uh, being passed on interstates during the snowy days. And I always remind people, if if we're driving below the speed limit in uh, unfavorable conditions, there's a reason. And it's it's trying to set an example for the public. But I've pulled a lot of four-wheel drives out of the ditch yeah. um, due to the fact, like uh, Sergeant Gonson, First Sergeant Gonson mentioned, um, that black ice out there. Yeah, they're going to get through the snow, but they're not going to fare well on ice. Yeah. And um, I think folks, like you said, do rely too much on technology these days. Well, and, and another thing is we have to be patient with other drivers. We may have the capability, the ability, the, the knowledge to drive a little bit faster than that car in front of us, but maybe that car doesn't. Maybe it's a new driver. Maybe it's somebody that's not comfortable. Maybe they've never driven on snow. We have to be patient and respectful of the other drivers who choose to drive differently than we do. And, and a lot of times that's where we see our crashes happen is somebody's driving slower, somebody's tailgating, somebody's trying to pass in a lane that's not clear enough and they kick snow up on the windshield. All these things happen. So patience and respect for other drivers, it goes a long way in these snowstorms. And then even the, the semi-tractor trailers, we realize, we, we understand that you weigh almost 80,000 pounds and this snow doesn't prevent you from driving a little bit faster, but it certainly prevents you from stopping. And that's where we see the crashes. Uh, snow doesn't always make it harder to drive fast. It makes it harder to stop. And the stopping is when we see the crashes. Absolutely. So, so talk about some things that people can do to prepare their vehicles. Let's think about, hey, it's wintertime. We, we need to be thinking every day that we wake up, we need to be thinking about there's a chance the roads are going to be slick. Um, but what are some things people can be checking on their cars to make sure their car is prepared for the winter? Sure. Well, I would say even before you get to your vehicle, you uh, look at any weather and or road condition reports that are out there via social media or on the news or wherever you may go for your uh, your uh, information that you need. And be mindful of the fact that there's travel warnings possible and there's also weather warnings. Do we need to travel that day? Is it a day I need to get from point A to point B or because of the weather and road conditions? Maybe it can wait till another day when it's a little safer. Less uh, cars on the road will help the plows uh, maintain the roads for the people that need to travel that day due to job reasons or, or whatever it might be. Uh, additionally, we want to make sure the the heat is hopefully working in the vehicle. The engine is, is getting serviced routinely, so the, the likelihood of you breaking down in a, in a bad situation uh, doesn't happen. We want a full tank of gas if we can, blankets in the car. Uh, we want to do the best we can to monitor our gas as we're driving, understanding that in the extreme cold and the road conditions, an incident may happen that you may be stuck on that interstate for a long period of time. And do you have enough gas in your vehicle to maintain the heat and everything else that goes along with that while you're stuck in traffic yeah. for a road that might be closed down? So those are some things you can do. And obviously, like we talked about, your driving behavior once you're in the vehicle, it plays a huge role as, as well. And be prepared for the worst. There was a time not too long ago that we got called out for an ice storm that happened unexpectedly. And I was stranded in my police car with a crash in one spot for over eight hours mm -hmm. because the tow truck just couldn't physically get to us. And so um, that's a long time for your car to sit idle and running, keeping that heat. Jeff, you're, you're a dad. All of your children drive. 
what would you tell your children if they break down on the side of the road? What are some some things that they need to be thinking about, especially when it's cold or or hazardous conditions? Well, the main thing, and I, and I did tell um, all three of my kids this, and the advice came in handy at a crash, is if you're in the road and you can safely get out of that vehicle, get out of the vehicle and, and abandon that vehicle on the roadway. If your vehicle won't move. Right, if your vehicle won't move. Um, because you're a sitting uh, target at that point. Um, but also, don't be afraid to dial 911. Yeah. If you're in a crash, dial that 911. And our dispatchers, on the side of the right? Highway. And our dispatch, I, a lot of people, when I, I get to a crash scene or something, I ask, did you call 911? Well, I didn't want to call 911. It's not an emergency. And I said, our dispatchers will sort that out when you call them. They'll, they'll get you the help that you need and they'll get you to the line you need to be on. But especially if you're in, in the roadway, dial 911 so we can get lights there to get people around you and get you out of that vehicle safely. But if that vehicle's in the road and you can safely get out of it, get out of that vehicle and, and get, get off somewhere the safe. Go to a tree line, other side of a guardrail, other side of a wall, far off the interstate as you can. Don't just stand on the side of the highway. Most certainly. I don't think people uh, really realize how dangerous the interstate highway is. Yeah. And uh, yes, get off that interstate. It's it's a deadly place to be. Well, and I think sometimes people become oblivious to the dangers because they're so uh, stressed and the anxiety. If you slide off and you're stuck in the ditch on the side of the highway, the stress and anxiety that comes with that, sometimes maybe you don't think about safety and you'll get out of your car and you're looking for your damage or you're trying to figure out how to get out. And if you're outside of your car, you're in such a vulnerable position because if you think about it, you just slid off of a slick road into that ditch. What are the chances that another car coming behind you is going to do the same thing? So it's time to, if you have nowhere else to go, stay in your car with your seatbelt on, with your eyes in your mirrors, watching for those those slick conditions because outside of your vehicle is no place to be. And that's an excellent point. Um, and I'm just going to reiterate, you said something uh, there about keeping your seatbelt on. Just because your car's come to a rest, if you're sitting even on the side of the road on the shoulder, keep your seatbelt on. Because yeah. if somebody hits your parked car there, you're better off to stay inside the vehicle. Yeah, it's designed to take that impact. Yes. Is, absolutely. Yes. And, and you know, one thing, we're talking about sliding off and road conditions and things like that. And people sometimes are surprised to hear me say this. But in 20 years as a law enforcement officer, I've never blamed the road conditions for a crash. The reason you crashed is not because the road was slick. The reason you crash is because of your driving behavior. And so now the, the slick road contributes to the crash, absolutely. But I don't I don't buy it when somebody says, well, I slid into the ditch because the road is slick. And you slid into the ditch because you were driving too fast. Um, and I certainly understand it's not always your fault. Maybe you're in the ditch because somebody was swerving at you and you had to avoid them to go in the ditch. I, I, we recognize those things, but it's not the road's fault. Right. There's no checkbox on the report that says the road is at fault for this crash. Right. Um, so again couple more minutes here and we talk about this winter driving and preparations for your car and all of that stuff um talk about just kind of general safety it's the time of year it's christmas time people are out shopping they're out and about um we know that theft is often a crime of opportunity right and so maybe you're out shopping and you load up your back seat with all the things you've just bought somebody's looking for that opportunity what are what's some advice you have for folks that are out shopping uh brent that uh, maybe they're not really thinking about, but you don't want to lose all the stuff you just bought. Sure, absolutely. Um, lock your vehicles, park in well-lit areas if, if you can. Any valuables you might have, if, you, if you're not going to keep them on, on your person, put them in the trunk, uh, of yeah. course, locked where they're not visible. Many uh, criminals this time of year will look through windows and see crimes of opportunity, we call them, where they see a wallet or purse sitting on a seat. That includes when you're at the gym. A lot of yeah. people like to leave stuff in the car. So if it's out of sight to the criminal, the odds of them breaking that window to see what might be under the seats or in the in the trunk, if they can even get to it, are, are slimmer than when they see an easy target like a purse laying on a, on a seat or something along those lines. So hide your valuables as much as you can. Lock your vehicles. Uh, keep keys with you. Don't keep extra keys in the car because with the keyless out entry, if someone gets into your car and they can yeah. just hit the start button, all of a sudden they're off with your car as well. Yeah, and, and again... You know, our goal is to keep everybody safe, and, and we do that through several different means. And our primary responsibility is, is the roadway, obviously, uh, but we certainly do investigate the, these crimes as well. And so um, if you have something valuable that you're not going to need or use, leave it at home. Um, and and we see these devastating uh, events that people have that, that experience that during the holidays when they lose things financially and it becomes more difficult for them. So, um, again, out on the roadway, safety, uh, safety first, slow down. It's that time of year you've got to expect those bridges are slick, 
the road's going to be icy or snowy. Um, if you hear them calling for snow in the forecast, um, maybe adjust your plans. Do something different so that you don't have to be out there. Sometimes we get accused of overhyping the storms or the media of overhyping the storms, but it makes such a difference when there's less cars on the road. I want to thank our guest, Sergeant Jeff Rader, First Sergeant Brent Gollinson, for coming in today. We hope everybody has a safe winter season. Happy holidays to everyone. Drive safe, and we will see you next time.